The Sukhoi Su-11 is a premium Soviet jet fighter in War Thunder. Let's see what it's got. In the immediate aftermath of World War II, the Soviet Union was very interested in getting a domestic jet-powered fighter produced and into regular service as quickly as possible. There were a few different designs and projects that were working towards this goal, and the Sukhoi Design Bureau's Su-9 was probably the most conventional. It featured a familiar layout shared by a number of other early jets, with straight wings, a long slender fuselage, and engines mounted in pods out under the wings. Like a lot of other first-generation jet aircraft, the Su-9 suffered from a number of development problems, including inadequate power from its engines, inadequate maximum speed, and a very long takeoff run. Eventually, the design was refined into the Su-11, which featured a number of enhancements. Improvements over the earlier design included a wing and engine layout with better aerodynamics and a higher critical Mach number, a strengthening of the internal construction, and some changes to the mid-fuselage in anticipation of a two-seat trainer eventually being developed. Unfortunately, the progress of early Soviet jet engines didn't quite deliver according to plan, and the afterburning engines it was intended to use never achieved an acceptable level of reliability or power. It ended up being fitted with a more reliable but less powerful engine, and although it was an improvement over the Su-9, the Su-11 failed to reach its design goals, and a program review decided that it was just going to take too much time to sort out all the plane's issues, and its performance was probably going to end up being obsolete by the time it was ready for military service. The Su-11 prototype first flew in 1947, but was scrapped the following year. What we get in War Thunder is the Su-11, a premium jet fighter in rank 5 of the Soviet tech tree with a battle rating of 7.0. This is a pretty early jet fighter, so it doesn't have any advanced combat systems, no radar or anything like that. What it does have is a cluster of heavy cannon mounted right up under the nose, and the capability to carry some external bombs. Now, for the loadouts, the Su-11 can carry basically just one or two bombs mounted externally. These aren't the heaviest, but they are enough to take out a heavy ground target on a direct hit. Now, in terms of the guns, the plane has a 37mm cannon and two 23mm cannons right up in the front of the aircraft. It gets a couple of different ammo options, and really, the air belts are pretty versatile, and they're even effective against light or medium tanks. Now, the real caveat to the guns, though, is that they can be very tricky to actually hit with. The ammo count is low, only 40 and 200 rounds respectively, and all three have a very low cyclic rate and very low velocity, with a pretty pronounced drop in trajectory past about 300 meters. These factors end up making it genuinely difficult to hit with in some circumstances, and in flying this out, I had a problem pretty often, and you can see it happen a few times in this video, where I had the correct firing solution on a deflection shot lined up, and I had the trigger down, but the target just flew across in between the shots due to the low cyclic rate of the guns. You'll be able to tell in the footage that I had a really hard time with these cannons, and it may take a bit of practice to get used to their weird ballistics. The good news is, when they connect, these things hit extremely hard, and even heavy bombers are going to be going down in usually just one short tap. The flight performance of the Su-11 is surprisingly good, at least as good as any other entry-level jet, and better than a lot of them. This plane has reasonably good acceleration once you get above around 150 kilometers an hour, and its top-end speed is a bit over 900, which isn't bad for a straight-wing jet. Most importantly, this thing has really good energy retention. Once it gets up to speed, it can maintain that speed without a lot of difficulty, which provides for a lot of battlefield mobility and the Su-11 can often choose its engagements a lot more reliably than other aircraft in this BR range. Now, there are some caveats and trade-offs for this good performance, though. 
The engines love to overheat if you leave them on full throttle. Luckily, you can power down even to just 98 or 99%, and that'll avoid engine problems without really giving up too much power. Now, in terms of maneuverability and turn rates, the SU-11 is only average. You won't be able to win a rate fight against most super props or some of the other low-tier jets, but you'll almost always be able to win an energy fight. So try to favor vertical maneuvers when you can, with the high yo-yo and vertical scissors being exceptionally strong moves in this jet. Directly related, since this plane's energy retention is so good, be on the lookout for some chump that you're chasing to pop his air brake and go heavy guns de jinking on you to try and bleed off speed and force an overshoot. As soon as you realize somebody is trying that, you should immediately pull up to trade some speed for altitude, as it's really easy to get sucked into that nonsense if you're trying to focus on aiming the guns with their weird ballistics. The SU-11 can drop combat flaps up to around 550 kilometers an hour. When you take the SU-11 out in a battle, you're usually going to be focused on air combat, but the potential for a little ground attack is there, and we'll get to that. Generally, you're going to want to build up a little bit of speed, and then get yourself into a good side climb, using the plane's performance and climb rate to get into an advantageous position early on at the start of the match. One of the things I found with this jet is that I didn't really have to worry too much about sacrificing altitude advantage as much as I did with comparable entry-level jets, since this one really has enough climb rate and enough energy retention coming out of a dive to regain most of its lost altitude without a lot of trouble. Just be aware that the controls do compress if you get going too fast on your way down. The jet's performance also gives you some pretty good options if you want to focus on high-altitude vulture stuff, hunting bombers and whatnot, or if you want to stay low and get into the furballs. Now, because of the ballistics on the cannons being so weird, you might need to get closer than you're used to in order to reliably score hits with this thing. So if you're having trouble at first, and I know I sure did, just practice a bit, because it's probably not you. The guns on this jet are just really wonky to hit with. Now, in terms of ground attack, I was actually surprised at how effective this jet is. The bombs aren't super difficult to hit with, even without any trajectory aids, and they've got a reasonable blast radius, so hitting AI ground units and bases really isn't too hard. If you fly this out as close air support, you might be surprised to find that this thing's cannons can actually pop a lot of the tanks that you're going up against at this battle rating. Don't overlook using this thing as a credible close air support option. It does a lot better than you might expect from a jet like this. Visually, the SU-11 looks a lot like other 1940s jet fighters, but I have to admit it kind of grew on me. The bulbous engine pods mounted mid-wing and protruding out in front like that, it looks really unusual, but in a good way. There aren't any interesting paint jobs available, but you can find a few on War Thunder Live if the solid silver just isn't your thing. Landing this jet is surprisingly awkward. You can drop landing flaps and gear a bit under 400 kilometers an hour, but there isn't a drag chute, and the plane's brakes really don't work very well so the landing run is usually going to be very long. You're going to want to make sure that you set up much longer final approaches to try and bleed off more speed before you touch down. And if you're on a map with multiple runways, make sure that you pick the longer one, because the shorter runways on a few of the maps are too short if you set down over 300 kilometers an hour or so. The cockpit has great visibility, an easy-to-use gun sight, and clear instruments in good locations. However, as with a few other planes, there's a ventral brace over the top of the cockpit that shouldn't be there and isn't present on the larger 3D model of the plane. Come on, guys. To close out on the Sukhoi Su-11, this jet has excellent engine performance for its battle rating. It retains energy very well in vertical maneuvers. Its cannons hit incredibly hard, and it can even take out medium to heavy tanks with them. Its flight model is like a UFO in arcade battles, and it gets premium bonuses. However, 
The cannons are genuinely difficult to aim effectively. It doesn't get a lot of ammo, the engines overheat on full throttle, and the landing run is really long. The final verdict on the SU-11 is that this is a very effective premium jet that can be a reliable grinder as well as being fun to play. There's a learning curve with the cannon's weird ballistics, but if you can get the hang of them, the SU-11 will deliver some major pain. As always, thanks for watching.